Hey everyone, welcome to the Singularity Computers Guide on how to pack up a water-cooled system for shipping. I'm going to take you through the techniques that I use. I've been shipping systems around the world for a long time and I've never had any kind of a problem. So the methods I use have been highly successful for me. It is fairly involved, it's a lot of work, but if it's going to get your system there safely, then it's obviously worth it. Now, you need to consider, obviously, that your system may be dropped. So the first thing you need to do is get inside the case and reinforce the internal components. If it's going to be dropped, it's most likely to be dropped on one of the six sides. So the top, the bottom, the back, the front, or either of the side panels. So you need to reinforce the components to handle force from those angles. So you need to have a good look at the components and consider where the weaknesses are. So the name of this build is Cytotoxic. I've just finished building it and it's ready to ship. I'll put a link on the screen to the build log. So I'm going to be using this system as an example. Now looking at this system, where are the weakest points? The radiators are not going to be a problem. They're bolted down with numerous steel bolts. The reservoirs are also bolted down very strongly. The water cooling loops are a little bit of a concern, although they are built entirely from fittings and acrylic tube, and I've reinforced them at their weakest points. The weakest spot for this build, and also most other builds, is basically the motherboard, where the graphics cards connect to the motherboard, because graphics cards with water blocks full of coolant are extremely heavy, and it, the worst case scenario would be if this system was dropped onto the windowed side panel because obviously that pressure would be pulling the graphics cards out of the slots and I mean it could potentially rip the slots off the motherboard it would damage the motherboard the graphics cards and the water cooling loops so really it would destroy the most expensive parts of the system the memory could also come out of the slot, so the system was badly dropped onto the windowed side panel. But memory is light, so it's not usually a problem. So these are the things you need to be thinking about when reinforcing your internal components. Okay, so how to reinforce your components. There's potentially a lot of different ways of doing this. I like to use foam, usually 50 millimeter thick foam, and it needs to be quite soft because you need to cut it the size and pack it in and around your internal components. You don't want to put too much pressure on your components. You don't want them to be bending or moving. The whole point of this is to stop them from moving. So just put enough pressure on them to hold them into position. I find that foam can be quite dusty and it sometimes crumbles. And obviously I don't want this mess inside of my systems. So I wrap my foam in cling wrap before I install it into the case. This is up to you. Now for those of you worried about ESD, I know somebody's going to bring up static. I've actually never had a problem with ESD in all of the years I've been building systems. And I almost never wear an ESD wrist strap, I just earth myself before touching components. I've now installed about half of the foam into this side of the build. And you can see I have it surrounding most of the components. I've cut it out in a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes so that there's not too much pressure on the components so I've reinforced both of the water cooling loops. I have foam between the memory. I'm even holding some of the cables in position with foam. You can't just put a few big pieces in. You really need to surround as many of the components as you possibly can. I've now installed the last of the foam. So I have another two pieces over the graphics cards, a big piece over the CPU and memory area, and another piece behind the reservoir on the left hand side. Now you might be wondering how I'm going to hold the graphics cards into the slots because as I've mentioned that's one of the biggest concerns when shipping a system. You actually need to basically jam a piece of foam in between the side panel and the graphics cards. So you can see the piece of foam that I have sitting over the EKFC bridge, it's actually only a little bit bigger than the EKFC bridge, is holding the graphics cards into the slots. Be careful not to put too much pressure onto the side panel. You don't want it to be bulging too much. You don't want to damage it. If the side panel is extremely difficult to install when you're trying to put pressure on the foam, then just cut down the size of the foam a little bit. You still want the side panel to be easy to install. You don't need that much pressure for this technique to be effective. Now I've also installed some foam in the lower compartment amongst the lower part of the water cooling loop and also at the top of the build. 
This foam is not exactly to hold components in position, it's more to protect the components just in case a small component comes loose, such as a nut or a bolt. The foam will prevent it from rattling around the build and damaging components. I've also installed a bit of foam around the back of the build to hold the PCBs in position that I have back here, for example the Bits Power X station, and also all of the wiring. I'm now going to start using some of the packaging that the case came in. So this is the Silverstone Temjin TJ11. I almost always use packaging from the case. So this is the plastic bag that the case came in. The main reason I'm using this is to seal the build, so from dust and from water. I've now wrapped a single layer of bubble wrap around the outside of the plastic bag. Now the only reason for this bubble wrap is basically just to protect the paint job on the case because as you're packing up the build and also when it's being unpacked on the other end, you're going to need to roll it around a little bit. So you need to roll it around a bit to tape it up. On the other end, you need to roll it around a bit to cut the tape and cut the packaging off. So just in case the build hits something and also to stop you know, scuff marks from handling it, that's all this bubble wrap is for. Now the reason I put this way up stickers on the internal packaging is so that you know which way is upright when packing and unpacking the build. It's surprisingly easy to lose which way is upright because you know when packing and unpacking the build you're rolling it around and by the time you've put all of the layers of packaging on the build when you're packing it up you often don't know which way is the top and it might end up on its side or upside down during shipping and it's not critical that it stays upright but all of the components have been mounted for the system to be upright and most of the time it's going to be stronger when it's upright. The cardboard and foam pieces on the top and bottom of the build are from the case packaging. It's not critical that you use any of the case packaging. It's just going to make it easier if you do. It's also a very effective way of doing things and it's going to save you on packaging materials. I've now wrapped the build in bubble wrap. So I've gone around and around the build probably 40 to 50 times until the bubble wrap reached the outside of the cardboard and foam pieces because these cardboard and foam pieces fit exactly inside the cardboard box that the case came in. That's the next step. We're going to put the system inside of the case box. I've also added some foam to the cardboard and foam pieces because these cardboard and foam pieces were designed for an empty case. It's about 10 times heavier now so with all of that extra weight we need a bit more foam, you know, a bit more packaging materials around it. Otherwise, it's just going to compress the existing foam, you know, and bottom it out. Now, when putting the system inside of the box, don't lift it up and put it in. You're going to potentially rip off some of the packaging materials and it's very difficult. Just tip the system upside down, slide the box on, and then roll the system over. When putting the system inside of the box for the first time, make sure that it fits in there tightly. Make sure that the packaging materials come right out to the box. You don't want the system to be moving around inside of the box. It's going to jar the components. So I've now rolled the box over with the system inside. You can see there is a small gap around the outside at the top, but the bubble wrap is sitting firmly against the box. So that's not going to be a problem. The foam comes right to the top of the box. It fits in there perfectly. So now what I'm going to do is completely tape up the box and I need to reinforce the box with tape to make sure the system is not going to drop out of the bottom of the box you know, when you pick it up. So make sure the top and the bottom of the box is very strongly reinforced with tape. I suggest going around at least you know, five times from a whole bunch of different angles. So the internal components have been surrounded with foam and reinforced. The system has been sealed and padded up inside of this box, but there's still some major weaknesses. This box cannot handle serious impacts. It can be torn, it can fall apart. If it is dropped on a corner, the box is just going to crumble. So I've now surrounded the outside of the box with about five to 10 layers of bubble wrap. This is just going to act as a small buffer 
between the outside of the cardboard box and the harder materials that I'm about to surround the system with. I've now completely surrounded the outside of the box with 6mm ply, some angle plate and cardboard. There's a lot of different ways of doing this part of things. I've used a whole bunch of different techniques in the past and I actually adjust my technique every time I ship a system. No matter what technique you use, it's critical that you reinforce the corners. You can use any kind of you know, metal angle plate or even plastic angle or cardboard. Reinforcing the corners helps to hold everything together and it means that if the system is dropped on a corner or on its end, you know, it's not just going to crumble. A cardboard box, if it's dropped on a corner, is going to crumble and that force goes straight into the system and it's likely to damage it. You can actually just get away with using plastic angle on the original box. I've actually done that with smaller and lighter systems. You just tape the plastic angle on and that's it. Now that would be the bare minimum. If you want to go all out, you can build a crate, you know, out of ply and screw it all together. That's going to be the safest way. But this time I've used ply on the top, the bottom and both of the sides. Either end is not going to experience much force as long as the system stays upright. So on either end I've used four layers of cardboard, just cut out from a cardboard box. The metal angle I've used on every single one of the corners. You need to be careful when using something like metal angle, it is very sharp. So I've filed off the corners and I've made sure that all of the metal angle is covered with tape so that it's not going to hurt somebody you know, during shipping. Now, I've actually taped everything together. I was going to screw it, but that's just going to make it more difficult to unpack on the other end. So as long as you use enough tape and you tape from different sides and different angles, tape is definitely strong enough. You might have noticed that I've taped the entire bottom. That's so that it will you know, slide on carpet and so that when it does get slid around on whatever material, the, the angle is not going to get caught on something and get ripped off, it's just to protect the, the bottom. As you can see, I've used a whole lot of fragile and this way up stickers. And that's about it. That's how I pack my systems for shipping. I hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.